Shabbat Shalom, beloved, on this, the Lord's Day, Saturday, and it is the Sabbath day, March 22nd, 2014. If you're brand new to our service on the Sabbath, I want to welcome you to our church family here. Very important sermon today with a very important message for the church. So I hope you will stay through the remainder of today's service and hear the word and hear the message today. I want to begin with announcements if I can very quickly. I was in the city of Flint, Michigan yesterday with my ministry. Um, I stopped off and delivered uh, canned goods and food to the soup kitchen on Fenton Road in Flint, Michigan. From there, I distributed winter jackets and clothing and knitted blankets and hats and scarves to the homeless. And as I was uh, coming down South Saginaw in the city of Flint, there was a horrific accident. There was a van upside down. Police and fire were on the scene and they were directing traffic around the accident scene. And as I was redirected when I came up on the next street, I pulled into a family dollar and I parked and I got out and I went to the scene of the accident. There was a young child that was ejected from the vehicle and they were putting the mother in the ambulance who I come to find out later uh, was pregnant. Brothers and sisters, I prayed and I prayed. I'm going to show you a short clip uh, from the scene yesterday, but there is more video footage that I will not show you. But I do want you to know I went there and I prayed and I prayed for both of them. But life is uncertain. We don't know what the next few minutes is going to bring. We don't know what the next hour is going to bring. And we've got to know that we know that we know that if we were to die this very moment that we would be in that heavenly abode with the living God who is so holy, who is so holy. We've got to understand that we're sinners saved by grace. We don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know what the next hour brings. We've got to truly know that we are ready. We've got to pray for the unsaved. We've got to be disciples. We've got to go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hi everyone, Pastor Dave, and I'm out here with my ministry, and it looks like uh, something bad just happened here. I'm on Saginaw Street, Flint, Michigan, our prayers for this situation, in Jesus' name. There's a car upside down, and I'm going to see if I can do anything here. I'm going to turn the camera off. It doesn't look good. I see a vehicle upside down. I don't know if you can see that. Sharing my day with you. Please lift these people up in prayer that have been in this accident. I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to go closer so that I can pray. In the name of Jesus, comfort them. Bring them peace. Let it be your will. See that they are okay, and that they know you, and that they know your son, and they call upon Jesus. They come into their heart. I'm going to cut off the camera. God bless you. Pray for these people. Now, the footage that I uh, will not show you, I was right there uh, at the accident scene, right at the yellow tape, and I was allowed to pray uh, for the victims of that crash. Church, we've got to wake up. We've got to repent. Pastors out there, you've got to go to your congregation, to your fellowship, and you've got to, got to preach on repentance. Repent, repent. Church, we've got to wake up today. We have got to wake up today. Okay, continuing on. Um, I am working on this weekend. Hopefully I will get it up by Sunday. 
a complete teaching on where we are today in 2014 and the video series will be in various segments titled Revelation the book and the blessing 2014 the church is scattered and led in various directions today uh, and the church is getting just a little bit ahead of their self so stay tuned uh, for Revelation the book the blessing 2014 many are chasing events happening in the world today and you know I want to correct myself rather than being in fear of these things I truly I've had this laid on my heart the church is getting excited over death and destruction and gloom and doom not fearing it but when there's a video on YouTube about maybe an asteroid or it's debris field hitting the earth or a mega earthquake rather than having fear the church is getting excited church you gotta wake up you gotta wake up time is running out continuing on join us tonight 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our live service be part of our church family over at tiny chat praise and worship music begins at 6 30 we go live at 7 o'clock p.m. tonight live chat room so please join us now trumpet of God ministries com is my website and I want to thank all of you that have come forward with so much for this ministry uh, we need your continued support one time is not going to keep our head above water at this point in the service is where I would ask for the offering but always pray about this first you have to be led by the Holy Spirit and if you are led to help support uh, this ministry with an offering go to my website trumpet of God ministries dot com now I'm not big on movies I'm not a movie fan I went to see the movie God's not dead and I don't want to give the movie away uh, I guess it's number two now uh, on the charts it's really uh, this movie is going to be uh, a blessing to all that go and see this but there was a very important message um, and there are a lot of important messages in the movie but there was a one very important message that kind of stuck out don't think for a moment that the devil uh, Satan won't tempt you with a luxury suite uh, but it's actually a prison don't think for a moment that he won't offer you all the things and all the material things of this world if you will just follow him I want to take you to the living word Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 through 11 then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward a hungered and when the tempter came to him he said if thou be the son of God command that these stones be made bread but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him if thou be the son of God cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone Jesus said unto him it is written again thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saideth unto him all these things I will give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me then 
saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now there's a very important message contained in the scriptures that I just read. Don't think for a moment that if Satan, the devil, would tempt the Son of God and offer him all the things of this world, all the luxuries, if he would just bow down and worship him, that he wouldn't offer mankind the same. There are many in the world today that do not know God, that do not want to know God. They don't have time. They're busy with all the material gains of this world. They don't have a Bible. If they did, they wouldn't open a Bible. They are living in a luxury suite, but it is Satan's prison. I have seen it throughout my lifetime, even to the point where I questioned God at one point in my life. I said, Father, I've followed you. I have followed you my entire life, but I can never get my head above water. I'm always one step away from being homeless. I've lived a life of uh, poverty. And I look around, Father, at people that don't know you. The drug dealers in the city of uh, Detroit wearing Rolex watches. They don't even think about you, let alone want to know you. And they have these $30,000 spinner wheels and executives, big time executives where I had worked. And I said, Father, they don't know you, but they're driving BMWs and Lincoln town cars and they're buying up real estate, buying up property. And all the things of this world, they are not a hunger. They are not a thirst. Uh, they're so busy with their lavish lifestyle and their homes and their properties and their summer cottages and their winter retreats and their trips around the world. And it seems like they have everything. But Satan will offer all the things of this world if you just will not follow God. If you won't put your trust in God, if you will not know that you know, but he sent his only son to go to that cross and to die on that hill on Calvary so we could have eternal life with him. And if you don't believe that and truly know that and know that you're a sinner saved by grace and repent and repent, you've got to be careful because Satan's got a luxury, a luxury sweet for you with all the wonders of this world, all the material things. But there's going to come a day when that door is going to shut and it's going to be a cell door and it's going to all be taken away and there's going to be gnashing of teeth, crying, wailing. You're going to cry out. You're going to scream. You're going to pray. No one's going to hear you. Now, Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me down that narrow narrow road and it's not going to be easy he also said it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven when many wanted to follow Yeshua follow Jesus he told them already the son of man doesn't have a place to lay his head he didn't have a caravan of camels and a caravan of horses. Jesus himself was in poverty. I'm going to take you to scripture. Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, 
Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was not hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall ye say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and you gave me not meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger? or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. In closing today's service, our rewards are not here on this earth. Our rewards, our treasures are being stored for us up in heaven. Let me ask you, are you still too busy in your daily life to give Jesus a drink, to put clothes on his back, to give him food to go and spend time with him and to visit him are you just too busy you just don't have time in your walk with him are you truly walking with him what have you done for your brother or sister that is hungry that is thirsty that is naked that is in prison. I love you all. My ministry is trumpetofgodministries.com to the homeless.